Item number, SCP-240. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-240 is to be kept in the secure artifact storage facility in Site-77. Due to its age and delicate construction, SCP-240 is to be contained in a vacuum-sealed container with humidity and temperature levels constantly monitored and controlled. The mouthpiece is to be permanently covered. No subjects are permitted to enter SCP-240's containment chamber. Description SCP-240 is a vehicle capable of air travel. It is constructed from a wooden rod which the operator sits in the middle of, a mouthpiece connected to a pipe device, and a large canvas sack, which contains a porthole for exhaust fumes to exit. The words Morsome Kite have been painted on the spot the operator is intended to sit on. The words From Many Comes Might are sewn into the canvas. When activated, SCP-240 is capable of flying for approximately twice the duration of the user exhaling into its mouthpiece. Following this, it will enter a slow descent and ultimately land. Although it can only take off from land, testing has shown that SCP-240 is capable of landing on water and heavier-than-air gases. For every one newton of force the user exerts into SCP-240, there will be 50 newtons of thrust in return. It produces dust emissions within the barrels. These emissions contain minerals such as nickel, copper, gold, platinum, potassic feldspar, and pyrox ferroite. However, the steel drums do not appear to have any connection to the mouthpiece or piping. Additionally, users utilizing SCP-240 have occasionally reported tasting ammonia, sulfur, and having hot gas rush through causing severe lung discomfort. Post-test medical examinations have not shown any corroborating damage to the subject's bodies. SCP-240 was discovered in 1927 in the possession of the Morsum Space Society, an organization dedicated to astrological research, following a raid on their headquarters due to bootlegging charges. Notes recovered during the operation indicated the bootlegging had been done to finance SCP-240. It was found inside the home and taken as evidence by the UIU. Its extra-normal capabilities were not discovered until three years later, when an evidence clerk casually blew into SCP-240 and was thrown across the room, suffering a broken nose and three fractured ribs. SCP-240 was immediately transferred to the Foundation while a non-functional replica was handed over to the UIU. Due to the age and relative obscurity of SCP-240, it was not difficult to manufacture documentation, discrediting it as a hoax. Addendum. Utilizing fiber optic camera technology, Foundation researchers were able to place cameras within SCP-240's mouthpiece during flight. Over the course of the examination, the camera recorded a location in space which appeared very similar to the solar system. However, the Earth and Moon were missing, and Venus had several possibly artificial satellites around it. All orbits were moving notably faster at a scale similar to the scale of the input-output of SCP-240. Further testing is currently being conducted. Item Number SCP-312 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-312 is kept in a large life-form containment chamber at Site-19. As it does not require feeding, only researchers are permitted access to the chamber. All personnel entering the chamber are provided with wide-brimmed hats and advised not to look directly upward. Description SCP-312 is an organism composed of very thin tissue layers and filled with atmospheric gases at a slightly higher temperature than the surrounding air. It typically floats approximately meters above the ground, although it will vary this in order to maintain its position relative to prey. SCP-312 is capable of creating a small lenticular cloud around itself by releasing water vapor and manipulating air currents, and uses this as camouflage. Within the cloud, SCP-312 is visually similar to a large jellyfish with a cap approximately two and a half meters in diameter, from which trails a tube of tendrils approximately 25 meters in length. SCP-312 preys upon large mammals and shows a strong preference for humans. 
While hunting, SCP-312 will stalk its prey from a position directly above, manipulating air currents around it to maintain this relative position. Prey can escape by moving at a speed upwards of 30 kilometers an hour, or by entering a large crowd, which seems to confuse SCP-312 and cause it to switch targets. SCP-312's core is filled with a large cluster of eyes. The majority of the eyes are human in appearance, except for one large central orb. The other eyes are connected to the central one by thin tendrils. This core can be observed through the tube of tentacles by prey looking directly upwards, or by a recording device above the targeted prey. So long as this core remains unobserved, SCP-312 will remain docile and seems capable of surviving indefinitely without feeding, although feedings do increase its mass and movement speed, as well as the number. However, if a prey animal makes eye contact with the core, SCP-312 will become active, generating a narrow, controlled vortex with the appearance of a long tube of cloud connecting the lenticular cloud above with the ground. The prey is pulled into SCP-312's tentacle mass by a strong updraft within the vortex, paralyzed by a venomous sting by the tentacles, then digested. Within about a week, partially digested remains of the prey will fall from the sky where SCP-312 disappeared. After a successful hunt, SCP-312 will drift aimlessly until another prey creature comes nearby. Based on incident reports, the Foundation believes there are at least three uncontained instances of SCP-312 in the wild. Recovery efforts are difficult because SCP-312 often follows a single person for months or years before its effect is triggered. Item Number SCP-314 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-314 is contained at the location of its original discovery, at Site-47, which has been built around the anomaly. Local personnel publicly operate under the guise of the U.S. Forest Service. Although SCP-314 is highly mobile, it has never moved beyond a 50-meter radius of its origin point. The area delineated by this radius is known as the Red Zone. SCP-314 has created an equally large depression in the Earth below its origin point. All attempts to remove or restrain the object have thus far failed, but containment has been achieved by the construction of Site-47 itself, which is also used for various physics experiments regarding anomalous objects. Any experiments involving SCP-314 must be cleared by Dr. Williams. With the exception of approved experimentation, all personnel are to keep clear of the red zone. SCP-314 is highly reactive to all motion within approximately 52 meters of its origin point. Addendum After Incident 314-OE, researchers are reminded that the object's kill radius is approximately 50 meters from point of origin, and for purposes of safety, should be assumed to actually be 51 meters. Although safe interaction is possible at the outer edge of the red zone, and the object may even exhibit what the late Dr. Stratham described as playful behavior at that range, all action within the kill radius has always been met with violent reaction. Description SCP-314 is a 0.97 meter long, 0.21 meter thick obelisk, which is highly reflective and metallic in appearance with tapered edges that are apparently sharpened to a molecular level. No material has ever been recovered from SCP-314. The object is capable of levitation and extremely swift motion, although it lacks any visible means of locomotion. Although research does not indicate any true intelligence, the object is most certainly sentient of its surroundings and extremely reactive to any motions or vibrations within an approximate 50... 52 meter radius. Analysis of rubble recovered from the ground below SCP-314's origin point indicates that the object arrived at this location sometime between 1975 and 1979, which is supported by pre-containment reports from civilians. The object emits no unusual radiation, save for a very faint sound which appears to be an anomalous broadcast of FM, 
a local classic rock station. Comparisons between SCP-314's vibrations and the actual broadcast of FM are identical approximately 85% of the time, although recordings from SCP-314 often include extra audio in the form of guttural sounds, snarling, and occasional commentary from the late DJ who passed away in 1998 and was not employed with FM after 1983. Research Summary SCP-314 reacts to all motion within its kill radius by impacting the source of movement, although it ignores particulate matter smaller than 125 micrometers. SCP-314 will continue to react in this manner until the triggering object no longer moves, has exited the kill radius, or has been reduced to pieces small enough to be ignored. It displays unerring accuracy. No limit to its speed has yet been established. Current experimentation revolves around introducing multiple targets into SCP-314's kill radius at a time to quantify its method of identifying, prioritizing, and reacting to multiple targets. Multiple slow-moving targets are often struck down in order of their introduction to the kill zone, notably in a method which suggests that SCP-314 is anticipating for their objects to be introduced. In Experiment 314-113, Several tennis balls were tossed into the kill radius by researchers standing outside the red zone. SCP-314 bisected each ball neatly, in such a manner that their remaining momentum took them out of the kill radius, while putting itself into position to strike balls not yet thrown. SCP-314 has correctly predicted when a researcher will only pretend to throw an object, as well as when a researcher will fail to throw an object into the kill radius, despite intent. Multiple fast-moving targets, such as bullets fired into the kill radius, can produce speeds from SCP-314 that exceed the sound barrier, or even create the appearance of SCP-314 existing in more than one location simultaneously. Experiment 314-230 flooded the containment room within Site-47. SCP-314 was able to strike at the encroaching liquid with such speed and consistency that it created an irregularly shaped dry sphere within its kill radius. The ground below SCP-314 remained dry at all times. In previous tests and accidents, SCP-314 has allowed liquid to fall upon the ground within its kill zone. When SCP-314 detects motion close to the edge of the kill radius, it moves in erratic patterns that observers have variously interpreted as threatening, graceful, or playful. These motions sometimes correspond to the individuals that provoke them, suggesting that SCP-314 may have some means of recognizing or remembering individuals to whom it has previously been exposed. Containment Breach 7-12-2000 At approximately 3.23 p.m. local time, SCP-314 exited its previously defined area of operation and cut through the walls of Site-47 before returning to its place of origin. No personnel were harmed during this event. This time corresponded with an off-site review on whether or not SCP-314 should be reclassified as safe. Whether this is coincidence or not is yet to be determined, but it clearly demonstrates that we do not know everything about this object or its motivations, or if it is capable of having any. Classification remains Euclid. Dr. Williams. Item Number SCP-346 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-346 is to be kept in a store-bought birdcage, at least 1 meter in height, at 1.5 meters in width either way. No locks or additional security measures are required, as SCP-346 is no stronger nor smarter than the average parakeet. SCP-346's cage is to contain at least two water dishes with standing perches to be refilled daily and fed a diet of five to six medium-sized live crickets daily. SCP-346's cage also contains one tree branch for perching, scratching, and climbing, one open-top nest purchased at a commercial pet store lined with moss, and a string with bright-colored bells on it for entertainment. The bottom of SCP-346's cage is covered with corncob-based biodegradable bedding 
and is to be cleaned out and replaced every other week. During cleaning, SCP-346 may be either held by hand, allowed to fly around a room with a closed door, or placed in a paper bag with a book over the end to be held out of the way. SCP-346's cage is held in Dr. Wright's office and may not be moved without her permission. Despite SCP-346's habit of nibbling fingertips and pulling strands of hair, SCP-346 poses no danger upon escape and may be recaptured, gently, with either a net or by hand. Description SCP-346 is a small member of an unidentified family of pterodactyl, ancient flying reptiles. SCP-346 is approximately the size of a small bat and has very lightweight bone structure. Although its head, wings, and legs are bare, its main body is covered with a soft coat of fur-like, dark-colored down. The origin of SCP-346 is unknown and was purchased by Agent in a small pet shop in Brazil, being marketed under the name Congo Motto. The owner of the pet store claims not to know where SCP-346 came from, having purchased a set of eggs off the black market, of which only one, SCP-346, hatched, believing them to be from a rare species of parrot. Some theories suggest that there may be a large colony of creatures similar to SCP-346 somewhere in South America. Testing has revealed that SCP-346 is an adult but appears to have had its growth somewhat stunted by malnutrition and being raised in a small, cramped cage. SCP-346 is also a male, and has been nicknamed by staff who find the little creature's appearance charming, as Terry. SCP-346 behaves in a manner similar to birds and bats, being most active at dawn and dusk, and energetically flying in whatever space it's given, snapping up insects either out of the air or off the ground in branches. SCP-346 chirps and squeaks in a manner similar to birds and rodents, and is most vocal during the evening hours. Some describe this as endearing, others as annoying. Addendum 1 After the discovery of SCP-1265, some theories suggest that there may be a large colony of creatures similar to SCP-346 somewhere in South America. However, the existence of SCP-346 implies that these alleged colonies, should they exist, do not possess the same anomalous properties as SCP-1265. Addendum 2 It has been suggested that further investigation into the origins of SCP-346 should be taken, in the hopes of finding a large colony of similar creatures, perhaps indicative of a surviving member of the pterodactyl lineage, or a rip in space and time. SCP-346 should be kept well away from SCP-529, as per request of Dr. Wright's. Item Number SCP-359 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-359 is to be contained within a 30 meter by 30 meter by 30 meter concrete structure. This structure is not to be entered between the hours of 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. local standard time. Any monitoring of SCP-359 during these hours is to be done via security cameras installed within the structure. SCP-359 is to be fed one adult pig every other day. Acceptable substitutions to this diet must be cleared with Agent and Dr. All remnants of SCP-359's prey are to be completely cleaned out of the containment structure by 8.45 p.m. the following day. Description SCP-359 appears to be a metal sculpture of a red-tailed hawk with a wingspan of approximately 4.3 meters perched atop a 12-meter arch. During daylight hours, approximately 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. local standard time, it displays no signs of movement and does not respond to any external stimuli. However, it has been determined by the Foundation that between the hours of 9 p.m. and 6 a.m., it displays the typical behaviors of an adult red-tailed hawk, apart from being nocturnal. SCP-359 is apparently capable of flight. The mechanisms through which it accomplishes this have not been determined, as its wings are too short to allow for flight. SCP-359 was originally located just south of in the United States. 
It first came to the Foundation's attention when local foresters began finding dead bodies of white-tailed deer, Otocoileus virginianus, in the area, within a one-kilometer radius of the sculpture, which looked to have been preyed upon. The white-tailed deer has no natural predators in the state of Investigation officially began when motorists on the stretch of state route that passes by SCP-359 reported that the hawk was not on top of the arch. On the same day, a local farmer reported finding the sculpture in his field, standing over the body of one of his cows, which had injuries consistent with predation by a large bird of prey. The farmer was administered a Class A amnestic and fed the story that the cow had died of natural causes and its body eaten by coyotes. Route was closed for repairs, and SCP-359 was transferred to its current containment site and replaced with an immobile replica. Addendum 1. Prior to containment, no evidence existed that SCP-359 had ever attempted to prey on anything besides hoofed mammals. However, since being contained, it has attacked, killed, and eaten four D-Class personnel who entered its containment structure during restricted hours. Investigation into the cause of this shift in dietary preferences is ongoing. Item Number SCP-391 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-391 is to be kept in a 5x5x5 five by five by five meter aviary made of heavy steel mesh. Structures mimicking mixed broadleaf, deciduous, and pine forests should be placed inside the aviary. Artificial lights mimicking normal day and night patterns are to be kept well maintained. Temperature and humidity should be controlled to mimic a humid continental climate. The door to the aviary is to be kept locked at all times when SCP-391 is not being studied, maintained, or fed. Personnel exiting the aviary are to be searched for objects removed from the aviary. Personnel attempting to remove material from the aviary without permission will be reprimanded. Description SCP-391 is a single female specimen of Taito Alba, or common barn owl. Pellets regurgitated by SCP-391 are typically comprised of some form of precious metal. The metal produced seems to vary with the type of prey ingested. The owl, nicknamed Midas, has been documented regurgitating gold silver, platinum, and other precious metals. Refer to the SCP-391 test logs for more information. SCP-391 was acquired in 2000 after a park ranger reported finding nuggets of gold resembling owl pellets. The Foundation found the report during a routine information sweep. All owls in a 50-kilometer radius were tranquilized and captured under the guise of a tagging and tracking experiment. Agents examined and released over owls before SCP-391 was found. Addendum 3911 After several examinations by Foundation veterinarians, no anomalies have been found within SCP-391. Other than its unusual ability, SCP-391 is a normal adult member of its species. Addendum 3912 Due to repeated contact with researchers Dr. and Dr. SCP-391 has become accustomed to some human contact. However, SCP-391 is still a wild animal and should be treated with caution and respect. Note: Dr. requested permission to breed SCP-391 to see whether the trait would be passed to its young. Request pending approval from the site director. SCP-391 Experiment Log Note: These experiments were carried out after SCP-391 was kept on a restricted diet of boneless, skinless chicken for a week. Researchers also withheld food for 12 hours prior to testing. Name: Dr. Date: Expunged. Item: 1320 gram white rat. Reaction: SCP-391 excitedly killed and ate the rat. Output: 163 gram indium pellet. Note: What was remarkable is the size of the pellet. It was the same size as a pellet from a normal owl. 
There couldn't have been more than 10 grams of indigestible material on the rat, but the pellet weighed the correct weight for a piece of indium of that size. It seems that whatever is facilitating the change in matter doesn't adhere to the law of conservation of mass. Name Dr. Date Expunged Item 1 320 gram black rat Reaction Same as the white rat Output Same as the white rat Note SCP-391 was placed in an enclosed system where all mass and energy input was carefully measured and showed a gradual increase in mass about two hours after ingestion. No energy or mass change in the system could account for this increase. It seems color is not important to the reaction. The pellet produced, however, can't yet be explained without violating the basic laws of physics. Name Dr. Date Expunged Item 1 320 gram black rat Reaction Same as previous tests Output Same as previous tests Note The rat used in the test was radio labeled and the digestion process was observed with specialized equipment. The meat of the rat was separated from the fur and bone and digested as one would expect in a regular owl. The extra mass in the pellet is not coming from the ingested material itself. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.